Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. I'm going to be uh, posting this uh, week that I'm away, so I thought it would be fun to work on my postcard uh, for the stamp postcard swap hosted by Janet M. Young and Dee Dee Willingham. And my idea, it's, it's a fall theme, fall or Halloween. And I thought it'd be fun to hand carve a stamp of Lucy wearing a little pumpkin costume. Um, and I had done a jello print using uh, Lucy as a chibi Lucy. Uh, I can link a video to that. And I was talking to chat one day and uh, about this idea. And then sort of, we sort of thought maybe it'd be better to do just a Lucy stamp and then a pumpkin stamp separate so I could maybe make different costumes for her for different seasons. So. That's what we're going to do today. Um, the 4x6 postcard, I'm going to use uh, gel printed papers to decorate the background. And then I'm going to use a uh, water, all of these stamps to make like a, a creepy uh, haunted house in the background. And we'll have Lucy in the foreground like that. I have to do five cards. They don't have to be the same, but I'd like to make them similar. We'll see how it turns out. So the first step is I have to uh, carve my Lucy stamp. So I had done this in Procreate. So I shrunk it down in Procreate. Instead of having her the right way around, I flipped her. Um, that's why this one's flipped as well, because I did this on the gel plate. So this is the what she looks like. Um, so instead of having her like this, I used Procreate to flip it. So I'm going to use this on my carving block. I'll put a link to these carving blocks below and I'm going to transfer her using pencil. And you can just color behind here. I'll fast forward this part. And then you can just use that. So the reason I'm using a pen to transfer the marks onto the carving surface is that I can kind of see where I have gone before. Uh, one thing I didn't mention is Lucy actually has a white stripe along her forehead. I didn't include this as a design choice because I just felt it would get too busy and I really wanted to emphasize um, her white eyebrows. So here I'm just showing in fast speed going around and then I'm outlining it again with a sharpie uh, because that pencil mark will smudge as I'm carving so this just gives me a better um, permanent surface. And I decided to uh, change the eye highlights to the top part of her eye. Now these perfectly round area eyes, that's gonna be difficult to carve. Uh, so I do simplify the uh, border going between her eyes there. I kind of make it straight across instead of having a little extra jag. And here I forget to demark where her white um, ear is. So I end up coloring it um, by mistake, but I do catch that while I'm carving it. I'm gonna leave her tongue white so that I can color it in with a different color. All right, now I've got my carving tool. I think I forgot to show this was the speedball carver and it has different attachments that store in the handle. And you just unscrew it like that, pop the attachment in and then screw it back up. That, so I could cut this down. So I'm gonna do that first using a X-Acto blade. So if you don't like carving, uh, skip ahead to, and I'll put the timestamp, like if you don't like blades and stuff, I'll put the timestamp to where the stamps are done and you can just skip ahead to that. So I'm just going to slice this somewhat like that. So it's a very soft carving material. Okay, so the step one is to carve out um, her face and then I find sort of like a 45 degree angle works pretty good for the carving tool. So once I carve out there, I'll switch to a bigger tool and I can carve out a little bit faster. These little details are a little tough. So I'm gonna put this on fast forward and I'll just add a voiceover if I feel like I need to say anything. Otherwise, we'll just have some music playing. 
So the idea is I want to preserve the areas that are black, including the lines. So I use this finer uh, V-channel implement to carve away the out along the outside of all the lines first. And it's really not very sharp. Like I'm being careful that I'm not like pointing towards myself, but it's really not that sharp, like the edge of it. And I'm finding for the curves, it's almost easier to just rotate the block itself. So here I'm rotating my hand, but other times you'll see that I rotate the block itself. And um, this is pretty fine detail, so I'm getting really close to what I'm doing and it's a little bit tricky to see what the camera is capturing. So I will have to cut out some footage because I get totally off camera. I try to start uh, if there's like a point that's in the stamp, like I try to kind of stop and go back and forth to make those sharp points like where her tail is meeting, I try to keep it like a sharp point. So I missed recording it, but you can see her ear there. I did catch that I'm supposed to um, keep it white. So I did carve out some details there. And now I'm struggling with her eyebrows. It's very uh, fine. I didn't do a fantastic job and unfortunately I was off uh, screen but I kept this in just so you could see like how finicky it was and then to do the highlight in her eye you can see that I'm well you, you can't see it but you can see me rotating the stamp 360 and rotating my hand as well so that's how I did the um, highlights in her eyes and I apologize that I missed um, showing that. So I've got all along the outside of uh, the details carved out. Now I'm carving on the inside of the lines. So I'm going around. Uh, doing a circle is difficult. So I'm trying to rotate the block as I rotate my handle to do the bottom of her eye. And it's not perfect, but it's, it's okay. It's okay. And then I'm going to be carving along the inside of the line. I'm just keeping it on regular speed here for now so you can see uh, what speed I'm actually going. I'm not going very fast, just taking my time. Sorry, I don't have a very good manicure. And you have to sort of pull those bits out so you can keep going. Back to uh, two times speed here. Uh, so it looks like I'm going slow, but I'm actually going slower, even slower than this. And um, her face was a lot of fine detail. I probably should have done the pumpkin first to uh, get my practice. So we're going back up to five times speed here as I uh, work my way at those little details. And um, so I'm carving, you can see I'm carving along the inside of the line and being sure to keep that black line intact. So I'm keeping the edge of my carving tool on the edge of the black line. So we're gonna do that all around her body. And here I go back up to her face and I'm trying to outline her mouth, which is going good. We're back to two times, but then there I accidentally went right through her little, her little mouth. Um, can't you can't put stuff back once it's done it's done and you know if I want to I can like after I stamp it like on the paper I could use a pen to you know complete the line again but I will never get that piece back so this is a reductive technique a subtractive technique so I'm being extra careful to get her little tongue uh, to get the little notch in her tongue properly so right there you know I'm that's where I noticed that I went through with the the line of her lip so I'm trying to be careful and um, just take my time. Uh, this is, like I said, this is sped up. So I'm gonna go uh, speed this up a little bit faster um, until we get her all carved out.
So here's where I'm at. Um, her tail's a bit of a struggle. I need to carve out all this white stuff. So I'm deciding whether is it worthwhile trying to get that tongue or should I just leave her tongue black? I think I'm gonna go for it. You can see I'm being super careful here because I feel like the tongue is sort of one of her main features. So I'm just really uh, taking my time, going slow and just picking away at it. I just changed the tip. I don't know, it's pretty big. We'll see, it might be too... Uh... Actually, I think it's gonna be good. Have to be careful not to um, cut the lines I preserved. So I'm gonna go slow and then I'll come back with the detailed one. Back to the small one. I'm not too worried about around here because I can probably cut that off. see how it looks and then that will highlight areas that need to be cut so actually it's not too bad like I think it kind of is very um, rough but whimsical I think I'm gonna clean up her ear right here a little bit more I'm gonna leave the eyes well enough alone I'm gonna go to that piece, this piece, a little bit of tail. I'm gonna try to clean up this area a bit. And right here. Try to clean that up. And those, um, and try to clean that a little bit. And I should probably clean this up. Maybe make her bum a little bit smoother. And then remember when you're carving, it's opposite, right? So this is this line here, and it's quite easy to see that line because um, it's inked. So I can just easily carve that away. I think I'm gonna go to the smaller one.
So basically I just repeat this cleanup process until I'm happy enough with it. So I won't bore you with that. We'll skip ahead to where I'm pretty happy with the stamp. All right, I think that's good enough because I'm probably gonna fussy cut her out anyhow. Actually, I might take off that little speck there, right here. Carefully though. Probably what I should have done is I probably should have carved the pumpkin first to get like my practice back. But you know what? She has character and that's okay. So let's do the uh, pumpkin now. So a lot of trimming there, but it's pretty obvious on the stamp. So wherever there's this um, the ink, I just trim that away. It's not horrible because we're gonna be fussy cutting it. So it doesn't really matter if there's these pieces here. So I don't know why I'm bothering to cut them. Okay, right, so I'm gonna fussy cut that and make sure it fits her. I like it. Okay, so let's, uh, we're gonna print some of these, fussy cut them and make some backgrounds. This is my plan for the background. I'm gonna make the sky a purple. I'm gonna use uh, different layers of this, uh, my Hippy Dippy Stencil Style One from Kim Art Studio. For the grass, I'm gonna do like a combination of these greens layering this uh, stencil, which is called Waves. We're gonna have it go um, horizontal though. And then for the pumpkins, I'm going to make a background color using this fancy fishnet, uh, one of my designs, uh, using different oranges, like a metallic and a vermilion. So for the purples, I'm just going to do layers right onto the paper, just directly from the openings here. So I'm using uh, the darkest one first, the dioxazine purple. And I'm gonna collage these down onto the postcard. So I'm hoping I'll have enough for the sky. I'm using just one eight by 10, but we might end up with a couple of pieces of paper. So I'm gonna take that off. that wear that off onto here as well just in case we need it whoops okay so we'll see I might end up using that and we'll see and then we're going to offset the layers this is a liquitex fluid Brilliant purple. There might be a little bit left over of the dioxazine, but that's okay. Put this on like that. And then we're gonna hopefully offset it. Two options for the sky. Okay. And then let's use this um, light blue violet. This has a bit that this other one kind of stuck in there too. Okay, we've got a little variation in color. Kind of mixing it around. Turn it over this way. And we're gonna try to offset it again. Kind of go up that 
that way a little bit this time. I wonder if this would be good to stamp the houses on. Would that work? Maybe we could do that. We could stamp the houses on I this. I think I want to put a, a kind of purple glaze on top of the whole thing to kind of darken it and bring it all together. Maybe this purple flash. Let's open that up. Add a little bit of this uh, blue violet flash too. So this is more of a transparent layer. Just should bring it kind of all together, I think. If not, we can add more layers till we're happy. There we go. I think that'll be a cool, a cool sky background. Let's go to the green now. Yeah, so I'm going to use this um, darker green, thylocyanin green. It's right for the dish sounds downstairs. That means someone's doing the dishwasher, so I can't complain about that. Okay, so we're just going to do this. We're going to kind of move it around, keeping it horizontal though. I think I want more off. I'm actually going to, I think we're going to do that. Let's pick it up more. I think that's good. Let that dry. Okay, we're going to uh, do the same with this light green. It's artist loft. let that dry. Okay, I'm going to pick this up with this uh, metallic green flash. Okay, that's good. I'm going to let that dry. Right, and this is going to be the sky. So I'm, we might add some black. I'm going to wait on that until we have our purple and we have our stamped images, and then we can always come back and add something to that. Just going to do a simple orange, and then we'll pick it up with the metallic. So this is a vermilion. So, I'm going to pick up 
all the little bits there. And I want this fairly bright so that the uh, stamping will show up well on it. It's pretty good. that dry. While that's drying, I'm just going to stamp off six of these Lucy's. I'm going to keep one for myself. I'm making, I think I'll make six cards, right? Send five and keep one. And we're going to be fussy cutting these out. So we're going to pick this up with the red flash. Gonna be our pumpkin. Okay, let that dry and we'll pull it. For our pumpkin. Our green, which we may add some black to. We'll see how it looks. We got our sky. And we got possibly our houses. But I'm not sure. So let's go ahead and just stamp these. I'm going to try to just kind of do it somewhat random. And then I can cut some out and see which ones I like. I'm doing way more than I need because I'm going to pick out the ones I like the best. Like that one, I don't know, it might look kind of weird. Okay, I'll let that dry fully. And then we'll do some fussy cutting and some stamping and we'll assemble the cards. Prototype um, postcard I did. So I cut out uh, two and a half inches of the um, two and a half by six inches of this print. And then I ripped about an inch and a half uh, from here to do the background. And I used this stamp set Winter Woods uh, by Stamping Up to stamp... Um, on the trees and I had fussy cut all of the um, stamped images and I used these uh, stamps that were sent to me by Janice Glines and I used just this one here and I did two different colors because I'm not going to have enough of this one um, because I do have to use some of them to do the background because I don't have enough uh, of this style. I'm going to have to use some to, of this one to do the background. So I also did one where I stamped the house onto the leftover um, orange from doing the pumpkins. So now I'm just going to demonstrate how I put one of these cards together. And feel free to skip ahead to the end if you just want to see the completed cards.
So here's our finished cards. Each one just a smidge different, and I'm really happy with them. Just giving you a little close-up view of each one. I'm gonna get these mailed off to Janet for the swap. All that's left to do is to just finish up the back and put a message on them.